I want to show another clip Biden asked about the filibuster, particularly. It's filibuster. So fill the filibuster. Um, you know, with regard to the filibuster, I believe we should go back to a position of the filibuster that existed just when I came to the United States Senate 120 years ago. Um, and that is that it used to be required for the filibuster. And I, I had a card on this. So I was going to give you the statistics, but you probably know them. Uh, that it used to be that uh, the, that well, from between 1917 and 1971, the filibuster existed. There were a total of 58 motions to break a filibuster that whole time. Last year alone, there were five times that many. So it's being abused in a gigantic way. And for example, it used to be you had to stand there and talk and talk and talk and talk until you collapsed. And guess what? People got tired of talking and tired of collapsing. Filibusters broke down and we were able to break the filibuster, get a quorum and vote. So I strongly support moving in that direction. In addition to having an open mind about dealing with certain things that are, are just elemental to the functioning of our democracy, like the right to vote, like the basic right to vote. We've amended the filibuster in the past. But here's the deal. As you observed, I'm a fairly practical guy. I want to get things done. I want to get them done consistent with what we promised the American people. And in order to do that, in a 50-50 Senate, we've got to get to the place where I get 50 votes so that the Vice President of the United States can break the tie, or I get 51 votes without her. And so I'm going to say something outrageous. I have never been particularly poor at calculating how to get things done in the United States Senate. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, I'm, we're going to get a lot done. And if we have to, if there's complete lockdown and chaos as a consequence of the filibuster, then we'll have to go beyond what I'm talking about. So let's just make something clear, because the media is not going to talk about this. The filibuster doesn't matter. What I mean by that is, yes, it's racist and they should get rid of it. But even if they got rid of the filibuster tomorrow, and I wish somebody in the media would have asked them this, even if they got rid of the filibuster tomorrow, what does it matter? The problem isn't, the, the overwhelming problem isn't the filibuster. The overwhelming problem is we have United States representatives in the House and the Senate who are bought off by corporations and big, big wealthy f***ers. That's the problem. When you have, you know, the Democratic Party over the recent days, you know, nobody questions this or nobody points this out. Democratic Party, when there's a mass shooting, loves to talk about 90% of Americans want background checks, but we can't do it. 90%, 90%, 90%. And they're absolutely right. Okay, let's reduce that by 20. When 70% of Americans want Medicare for all, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Might be too extreme. I don't know. Might be too much. I don't know. How are we going to pay for it? So 90%, we have a moral imperative to act. 90%, we have a moral imperative to act. 70%, well... I don't know. My donors don't want it. $15 minimum wage. Overwhelming support. Including majorities of Republicans. 90% want background checks. We have a moral imperative. 90% want back background checks. X However, I don't know the numbers, but the overwhelming majority want a minimum wage. Sorry. Senate parliamentarian. Senate parliamentarian. Let's just get you know, this first deal through, and then we'll focus on the minimum wage. The problem is not the filibuster. The problem is we don't live in a country. We live in the United Corporations of America. Let me repeat. We live in the United Corporations of America. So even if Biden got some courage, which he don't have it, and said, you want to know something? We are going to abolish the filibuster. It is a relic of Jim Crow, which he admitted before saying, I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, what are you going to do? You got Joe Manchin, who's a corrupt 
basically a Republican. The media keeps saying, well, you know, somebody more liberal can't win in West Virginia. Absolutely somebody more liberal could win in West Virginia if they ran a progressive populist campaign. If you ran a progressive populist campaign and did, and w- did strong organizing and had a st- smart media campaign, you could ac- absolutely compete to win in West Virginia. Don't let the media gaslight you that only Joe Manchin can win in West Virginia. Uh-uh, not true. But putting that aside, what are you going to do? Joe Manchin, he's bought off. Uh, Gene Shaheen from New Hampshire just said, oh, no, I don't know. I'm not for getting rid of the filibuster. She voted against the $15 minimum wage. You got Chris Coons and Tom Carper in Delaware, Biden's backyard. They voted against the minimum wage. So honestly, I I don't want to minimize it because I completely understand, particularly black people who say, get rid of the filibuster. It is racist. We absolutely should get rid of the filibuster. I I don't want people to think I'm poo-pooing getting rid of the filibuster. But that's just step one. Step two is we don't live in a democracy. So even if you get rid of it, Biden himself said, well, we don't have necessarily 50 votes in the Senate for all these things. And why don't you? That is the question that the mainstream media will not ask. Senator Manchin, Senator Coons, Senator Carper, Senator Shaheen, Senator Sinema. I forget the rest that voted against the minimum wage increase. Why? Why are you voting against the interests of your own states? Minimum wage increase, popular in West Virginia. Overwhelmingly popular in Arizona. Crystal Ball and Sager just did a segment how cinema's poll numbers went down in, in Arizona because of her, you know, thumbs up shenanigans on the filibuster. So you're telling me, you're telling me that we're talking about the filibuster here, but nobody's asking, uh, what about these corrupt politicians that are literally literally blocking their own constituents' wishes. Isn't, demo- isn't representative democracy about the popular will? Isn't representative democracy about uh, actually getting elected based on promises you make and then listening to the people that re- represented you? Apparently, the Democratic Party wants to talk the talk and, and virtue signal over 90% of Americans want background checks when it's a cultural issue. Because... The bottom line is, obviously, gun control is a safety issue and I think a moral issue, but it's more of one of those cultural issues. It's not an economic issue. So that's why they are very, very, very quick to jump on, look at the polls when it comes to cultural issues because their donors don't mind them doing that. Their donors do not mind the Democrats being strong on gun control because it doesn't affect their pockets. It does not affect the bank's pockets, the fossil fuel. Big Pharma, big real estate, Silicon Valley, if Democrats are strong on guns. It does affect them if you start looking at the polls on Medicare for all, on a $15 minimum wage, on actual economic issues. No, no, no. We can't look at the polls. Don't worry about popular sentiment. Doesn't really matter. I'm just, you know, let's just cut the crap. The media, you know, they're going to talk, they're going to react to his press conference all night in primetime tonight. They're going to make it like the filibuster is the issue. Frankly, the filibuster is not the issue. The filibuster is not the issue. It's a issue. And I agree with Obama. I agree with Biden. It, it, it is racist. It should be abolished. But let's not let them deflect and distract that this is the underlying issue in our democracy. And if we just get rid of the filibuster, all of a sudden, like mana from the heavens, progress will come. That's a bunch of bull Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.